Hi guys, welcome back to Our Kills. My name is Mary Lou aka The Killing Mind and today I wanted to start a series of videos about some of my favorite contemporary artists, music artists that are not receiving the hype they deserve in my opinion. I'm sort of inspired by creators like Jose M. He's Colombian and uh, he does talk about different Latin artists. He basically talked about all the artists that I listen to right now. And it's basically a series about... Uh, the, the point is to help his audience discover this artist, just talk about them. So I thought, why don't I do the same? And this year I would like to post one video per month about an artist that I think is like underrepresented and I just think deserves more hype and attention. Starting with a Singapore based non-binary artist, I will do my best to refer to them as them. Um, English is not my first language so I just want to make it very clear I'm doing my best here. And their name is Yo. I believe it's pronounced like that, but I'm talking about this artist right here. So Yo is a Singapore-born artist. They are currently living in London, I think, where they studied. They're very young. They're 26 years old. I have just, as a reference, 24. And I wanted to talk about them because I think they are their music but not just music also like aesthetic art just the concept the artistic concept behind their artistry their image is perfect on wikipedia i do have some notes right here they're described as an ambient glitch in asian post-pop artists so these are the genres that they make and glitch is very important because their second album is called glitch princess and they chose their name from uh, a character in final fantasy which i believe is a video game i'm not into video games really but you know to to each its own and they were part of the band uh, Riot Diet. They started making music when they were a child. And even though they did not live during the... They were not teenagers during the like goth emo era. They really are pretty gothic. It reminds me of those like very emo bands of the 2000s. But in a more like, yeah, in an Asian key, there are plenty of, not just musical, but also visual artists and painters, sculptors from countries like Japan, South Korea, Singapore, China. They're just killing it. They're killing it. Their art is just so beautiful. And I'm also reading some like um, Asian as well as Asian of asian american asian canadian literature like for instance i've just finished this book right here by hong kong and she's a south korean writer and i also have other I have another one right under my camera give me a second like i will start this one pretty soon diary of a boy by emmy yagi so i don't know i just find that Asian artists and just so their art is just so um, up, unsettling, upsetting, and off putting. These are the words that I was looking for. And you kind of never know what's going on. Even books like I've just finished Before the Coffee Gets Cold from a Japanese author, I forgot his name but i just forgot i just uh, finished that book and even though it's not like it's kind of like the outside like the frame the out outside frame is very the, their facade 
the way at least they, these authors are translated is very i want to say naive but like very polite very kind almost like kind of formal but what they are describing is just very unsettling situation it just looks really weird in a good way though so i believe your whose real name is Nach Mio, by the way really gives out similar vibes to these like asian contemporary asian literature and why do i want to talk about them because i just think they're image their aesthetic is just hella cool their their all concepts they published three eps that i have not listened to for now but um i listened to their three albums they first published yo in 2014 then pathos in 2016 coma in 2017 about coma they said i wrote this album to commemorate the people i've lost of course, with their very dark imagery, obviously their music and themes and lyrics are also going to be very sad. Then they released three albums so far, Serotonin 2, Glitch Princess and Soft Scars last year, which ended up being among my favorite albums of the year. I forgot which position but definitely i was i saw the um, cover on spotify i was like oh this sounds this looks hella creepy i want to see what this is about and i listened to it and i was like oh this is really it's really cool and they said about serotonin too they said writing the record i was dreadful i didn't ask for much i didn't need to be happy i just wanted to be content See, you never know whether, like, because I don't want anybody to suffer, but if they created this, if it's pain, like, your biggest inspiration, their biggest muse, then, I don't know, just like we're celebrating somebody else's pain and, and demons. And they often talk about yeah, the, the demons, my favorite song of them is definitely Blood Bunny. This was one of my favorite like songs of the year. It's just amazing, Blood Bunny. Um, again, according to Wikipedia, Yul's biggest musical influences are the 1990s and 2000 like emo artists like My Chemical Romance, Avin, Radiohead, The Pixies, Machine Pumpkins. I can definitely see the influence there and yeah i would say that even i think they were a child when they were definitely not a teenager during that time because usually people that were teenagers during like the emo goth era they end up like keeping that sort of very dark style um but yeah that's what they come from and music wise it, there are plenty of tiktoks of them playing the guitar in a true emo punk punk rock style but it's the it's like titles like serotonin 2 and it's just like freaking upsetting and also glitch princess like i will uh, remember her i will remember them forever as the glitch princess because they are the glitch princess you know they it's like it it makes me think of a glitchy image of them and they just exist in this glitchiness you know I check out their website and it is pretty cool as everything is very yeah, upsetting. I think their the best word to describe them is up, um, off-putting, uh, upsetting. 
Hide is a pretty cool website. At the moment, they uh, do not have a lot of shows planned. I do hope that they're gonna add more. And I do hope they're gonna come to Toronto because I'm definitely going to see them. Also, they're not a super like big, very well-known artist. So I'm guessing the tickets will not be that expensive. I want to know your um, opinion about Yul, aka Natch Meal. I would like to keep these videos short because I would like to, it's like not worth it to talk about artists and their music in detail. I would like to, I would like for you to just go out and listen to their music instead. So please do listen to y'all. Let me know what you guys think. If you want to recommend an artist for next month's series, I have to find a name for this series. Please feel free. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.